we are on a journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we came from Him and we will ultimately return to Him. That's the story of humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as He put us in this world, He gave us two systems, I dare, I dare say two systems to process information. One system helps us navigate this physical world. So this is more of a mathematical system, logical, rational system. When you go to school, that's what you use. When you're studying math, that's what you're using. When you understand physics, that's what you're using. When you do IT and electronics, that's what you're using. One plus one equals two. If I let go of this device, it's gonna fall. That's gravity. You understand this with your brain. So Allah gave us our brain to help us navigate this world so we can go through it safely. We can have a living. We can have a life that makes sense in a physical sense. But that's not the only system Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. Allah gave us another system and this system is based in our hearts. It is the system that can connect to the world of the unseen and it intuitively understand how to process information that has to do with the unseen. So for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa, he's the most merciful, he rose upon the throne. If you understand this physically, try to process it in your dunya brain, you will misunderstand it. You will attribute to Allah that which does not, which does not suit. Him. And that's exactly what happened to the people who went astray with the names and attributes of Allah. A man came to Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, when he was in Medina. And he says, Ya Imam, Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa. Kayfa istawa? He says, the, the Lord or oh, the most merciful rose above the throne. How? What did Imam Malik say? He says, Al istiwa ma'lum. He says, Allah's rising upon over his throne is known, meaning it's known to the heart. It's known in revelation, it's a fact. Well kayfu majhul and how is not known to us. But our hearts know it's true. Our hearts understand it at that intuitive level. Well, imanu bihi wajib, and believing in that is an obligation because it's in the Quran. Wasu'alu anhu bid'a, and asking how is an innovation, is a bid'a, is 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 an is a is an infringement on the religion. So he was referring to these two levels. When we process matters of the unseen, it's not mathematics, it's not physics, it's not chemistry. It's not what you know about geography and about gravity. When we come to Alam al Ghaib, the world of the unseen, it is the heart that is the tool to deal with that. The description of the angels, the state of the, of the soul, the souls of the believer, how the soul leaves the body while in sleep. How as Abu Darda radiallahu anhu says that when a person before they go to sleep, they make wudu and they go to sleep in a state of wudu. He says, فَإِنَّ الرُّوحَ تَصْعَدُ إِلَى الْمَلَأِ الْأَعْلَى وَتَسْجُدُ تَحْتَ عَرْشِ الرَّحْمَانِ وَتَبْقَى سَاجِدَةً إِلَى أَنْ يَسْتَيْقَمُ when the person goes to sleep while in a state of wudu, their soul travels to the upper world and it prostrates before the throne of Allah, under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, until the person wakes up, until the person wakes up. How come? But the soul is in the, in the body. That's the soul. It can be in two places at the same time. Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he says in a book as he was describing, he was talking about Jibreel alayhi salam. And he, when he was talking about the description of Jibreel when he appeared to the Prophet sallallahu when he first gave him the revelation. And the narration goes that 
Jibreel, when he appeared to the Prophet ﷺ, oh, that was the second time, the, the Prophet ﷺ saw Jibreel in his original form. He said he had 600 wings and he blocked the horizon. So Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim describes this, he says, and when Jibreel was doing that, Jibreel appeared to the Prophet ﷺ, and when Jibreel came down in the form of a stranger man, he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he was with his companions. He came as a stranger who dressed up so nicely. He came to the Prophet ﷺ, he put his knees against the knees of the Prophet ﷺ, he put his palms on the thighs of the Prophet ﷺ, and he said, Akhbirni anil Islam, tell me about Islam. Akhbirni anil Iman. Akhbirni anil Ihsan, tell me about these things. Akhbirni anil Sa'a, tell me about the hour. And the Prophet was responding. The hadith that Umar al Khattab narrated. So Imam al Qayyim says, if you ask, where was Jibreel at the time? Yes, he was with the Prophet, but he was also in, on the seventh heaven. He was above. And he says, and if your mind cannot digest this, leave it and don't bother with it. Because he says, لِهَذَا He says, because for this, there are hearts that are created. There are hearts, specific hearts that are full with faith that are created for that. Because you're trying to process it in your head. And that's the problem. So when we are talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we process the information in our head, as I told you, it's going to fall on deaf ears. What is this? Okay, the believers are going to go into paradise. They'll be happy. They'll enjoy themselves. Then they will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. End of story. Nothing. That's how your head understands it. Because your head is looking for physics, mathematics. But this information... When it hits the heart, the heart expands. Faith is aroused in the heart. And the soul is awakened. So, Aisha radiallahu anha, she heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi say in a hadith, Man ahabba liqa Allahi, ahabba Allahu liqa'ahu. He who looks forward to meet Allah. He who loves, or she who loves to meet Allah, Allah looks forward to meeting them. Allah looks forward, Allah loves meeting them. Aisha radiallahu anha knows that meeting Allah means death. So she says, Ya Rasulullah, wa man minna la yakrahu al-mawt. She says, O Messenger of Allah, who among us does not hate death? Who's not scared of death? The Prophet said, it's not this. He said, but the person who prepared himself to meet Allah, he looks forward to going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he knows what awaits him or what awaits him. But the person who failed to prepare themselves, they know that it's the punishment of Allah that is awaiting them. So they hate to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah doesn't look forward to meeting them. So a true believer in their hearts, and that's how Allah designed us, a true believer seek the moment, they seeks the moment to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the best time in their life, in, the, in their existence. That's the time they look forward to. Because if you ask, what is the eye created for? The eye is created for to capture images and send them to your brain where you can interpret them and understand them. What is the ear, what are the ears made for? The ears are made to capture those sounds and interpret them and understand them and maybe enjoy them. What is the tongue created for? It created for this kind of movement that it helps you to express meanings in your mind, express them in the form of language. And this is why speech, every organ that you use in your body, if you use it for what it was created for, there's a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. And there's an urge in your tongue to speak. There's an urge in your eye to see. You want to see beautiful things. You want to capture beautiful scenery. Your ears want to hear beautiful things because when you use what, what is created for what it was created for, there is joy, there is harmony, there is beauty. The mind is created for what? For processing information, for thinking logically and rationally. And that's why when you use your mind to solve puzzles, 
when you use your mind to understand something you don't understand when you use your mind to, un to learn a new language or to get some kind of new knowledge you are actually giving your brain so much pleasure this is why we enjoy learning and reading the physical body is designed for it to to move around and to do things and to make things so when you use your body for what it was created for you you experience this joy and this fulfillment in your body and you feel the health in your body actually your your body pushes you to do something when you are healthy you can't sit still you find the energy to move that's your body seeking to do what it was created for that's all physical stuff what is the heart created for what is the heart created for? It was created for one thing. The heart was created for one thing. To love Allah. And that's the meaning of worship. So when the heart seeks the love of Allah, it seeks the nearness to Allah. Anything that brings it closer to Allah, anything that connects it to Allah, anything that reminds it of Allah, anything that puts its attention on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heart looks forward to it. It enjoys it and it seeks it. And that's why a person who does not give themselves the luxury of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, contemplating the whole concept of divinity and the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the person who deprive themselves of reading the words of Allah and trying to understand their meanings, they are depriving their heart of what it was created for. So they give the heart so much pain. And when they do this, they try to medicate it. And they, med med they medicate that by keeping the heart busy with, with the love of something or someone else. And it's exactly like when someone is starving and their body seeks nutrition and food and they give their body junk food. We're giving our heart junk food by loving other things and, 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 and other persons other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're depriving our hearts. But the reason we don't feel it is that we're intoxicated with this world. We're intoxicated. We, we, we're busy. We keep ourselves busy. That's the reason why sometimes a person cannot sit by themselves. They cannot think by themselves. They can't have five minutes to themselves. Why? Because they know their heart is going to blame them. Is going to roast them. So they feel this sense of void and they want to run away. So they, they call someone or they, they, they start checking their social media or they, they look for, for, for a movie to watch or for a game to play or a match to watch or something to do. And they, they want to go out and spend time with friends but not spend five, to five minutes by themselves because they know there's a dark place inside that they have made when they have neglected the rights of their heart. So the heart is designed for Allah, to love Allah. And the heart feels sweetness and real happiness when it is the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this world, and this is something that was said by many of the tabi'een, they said, مَسَاكِينٌ أَهْلُ الدُّنْيَا خَرَجُوا مِنْهَا وَمَا ذَاقُوا أَطْيَبَ مَا فِيهَا they say, poor are the people of this world. Poor are the people of this dunya. People are attached to this world. They have lived through this world and then they departed it while having missed out on the sweetest thing in it. And the person was asked, وَمَا أَطْيَبُ مَا فِيهَا They said, مَعْرِفَةُ اللَّهِ وَمَحَبَّتُهُ وَالْأُنْسُ بِهِ وَالشَّوْءُ إِلَى لِقَائِهِ he said, the sweetest thing in this world is knowing Allah. Knowing Allah. Loving Him. Enjoying His closeness, His nearness, His presence. And longing to meet Him. Longing to meet Him on the Day of Judgment. That's the sweetest thing. That's why the Prophet wasallam he said, جُعِدَتْ جُعِدَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ He said, the sweetness of the coolness of my heart, the sweetness of my soul is in the prayer. Why? Because in the prayer, you're in a direct meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're the closest. The Prophet وسلم, said, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدُ The closest a person is to Allah when they are in sujood. You're making a sajda, you're the closest to Allah. And if you don't feel it, you're not praying properly. 
your heart feels that it's a spiritual nearness which is real it is it's more real than physical nearness and that's why in your heart there is a place that if you tap into it and if you allow yourself to contemplate the whole notion of your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you would come to a moment where you feel you know Allah more than you know yourself you know him you experience his presence his presence and his closeness that's in your heart the Quran that's what the Quran does when you read it with your heart that's what the Quran does because these are the words of Allah you reach a point where, where you truly turn to Allah and say I know you I just know you more than I know anyone else and you don't know where that knowing comes from it's Allah's gift to you it's Allah's secret in your heart that's what the heart seeks. It seeks to get more of that. That's why the Prophet ﷺ used to pray most of the night. And Aisha radiallahu anha tells him, Ya Rasulullah, lima taf'alu thalik, wa qad ghafar Allahu laka ma taqaddama min dhanbika wa ma ta'akhar. Messenger of Allah, why do you do all of this? Allah has forgiven. Allah has given you complete forgiveness. Why do you do this? His heels used to crack and bleed. And he would say, Ah Aisha, afala akunu abdan shakur. Aisha, don't you want me to be a thankful servant? I want to be thankful to Allah. I want to connect to Allah, I want to be with Allah. That's why the scholars, Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah, he says, the person who truly finds Al-Uns Billah, Al-Uns Billah, enjoying the presence of Allah, you become hooked. He says, a person who does that cannot enjoy the, the company of humans. Everything becomes a distraction from Allah. That doesn't mean these people don't develop a social life. They do develop because part of their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be at the service of the creation of Allah. They know that's one of the biggest highways to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they do it for Allah, not for the people. And that gives them a deeper and more profound form of socialization. So that's what the heart seeks. So it is narrated in Sahih Muslim from Suhaib al-Rumi radiallahu anhu and Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِذَا دَخَلَ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ الْجَنَّةِ After this whole journey that you've listened to and what happens to the soul when finally people of the hellfire are in the hellfire people of paradise are already in paradise things have been you know sorted out everything has been finalized and this whole test of this life and this world has come to an end. All the grief and the grievances, all the pains, all the struggles, all the joys, all the moments of happiness, all of that is gone. Now we come to the real life. When people of the hellfire and the hellfire, people in paradise are in paradise. And Allah's might and power and wisdom is manifest to everyone. When the people of Jannah have entered Jannah and they are in Jannah. And now the scholars as they talk about this hadith, they say the first thing Allah gives the people of Jannah is entering Jannah. Then what He gives them after that, safety, that there will be no death. And you will and the second safety is that you will not be taken out of this place. That's it. You're here. You're here to stay. That's it. There's no end to this. Nothing is going to blemish this. Nothing is going to water it down for you. So this kind of safety, finally they have arrived. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Ahl al-Jannah, Saluni, ask me. فَيَقُولُونَ يَا رَبَّنَا مَا نَسَلُكَ وَقَدْ غَفَرْتَ ذُنُوبَنَا قَدْ أَدْخَلْتَنَا الْجَنَّةِ Oh Allah, what should we ask for? Like they're enjoying themselves. Everything. They live in, in peace, in happiness. They have their palaces and their houses and their spouses and their children and the beauty and the best types of food and complete peace and beauty. And even, by the way, sometimes we think about paradise, we think it's only the, these physical things. But look at what Allah SWT says about the people of paradise. لا يسمعون فيها لغوان إلا سلاما. They do not hear in it any bad words. There's no bad language. There's no backbiting. There's no tail carrying. They only hear peace and beauty. That's all you, that's, that's so much happiness, by the way. There's so much peace and tranquility. 
So after they've enjoying all of this and they are they are consumed and preoccupied with this, Allah Allah tells them, ask me, and they say, oh Allah, you have forgiven our sins, you have protected us from the hellfire, you have allowed us into paradise. What more could we ask for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Uhillu alaykum ridaya fala askhatu alaykum abada. He says, I give you my pleasure. I'm pleased with you and I'm happy with you and I will never be upset with you. Then all of a sudden, فَيَكْشِفُ hijab. Then Allah removes the screen. فَيَنظُرُونَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ فَمَا أُعْطُوا شَيْئًا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِمْ مِنْ ذَلِكِ that moment, Allah reveals this screen. That screens him from his creation. And the people in paradise are able to see Allah firsthand. And they forget everything in paradise, completely absorbed in it. And the Prophet says, and they were never given, and they will never be given anything that they love more than this. To the point they lose themselves. They forget about paradise. They forget about everything in paradise because they're seeing Allah's face. That's the ultimate. Allah knows that's the ultimate happiness. That's how He created humans. That's the share of the heart. You look at paradise, everything is the share of your eyes, your tongue, your stomach, your skin, your sensation, your everything. What is the share of the heart? Being able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this happens for the people in paradise every Friday. Every week, once there's a place that is called the souq for them to meet in, where they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Prophet sallallahu another hadith, he tells us, he says, إِنَّ مِنْ أَعْلَىٰ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ مَنْزِلًا مَنْ يَرَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بُكْرَةً وَعَشِيًّا there are people in the highest levels of Jannah that will see the face of Allah in the morning and in the evening. These are the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we get there? First of all, just give yourself the right and the luxury to look into your heart and find that longing that you have in your heart for Allah. That's the starting point. This is not something you can engineer in your head. The information is not going to give you anything. But this is something, this is a need that's put in your heart. That's what your heart really is. That's what your heart really seeks. Just like your mind is thirsty for knowledge and information, your heart is thirsty for Allah. And the notion of your heart the notion that your heart gets about you being able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what your heart is looking for. So that's what you need to look for. And then remind yourself, when you tap into this and you bask in it, you allow yourself to spend time in it, do you know what happens? This becomes the biggest motivator for you in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers in Surah Al-Rad. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا بِتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِمْ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ Allah describes them and those who have been patient. And what made them patient is hoping to see the face of Allah. So what made them put up with all the hardships that life throws at them, what made them hold back from their desires and their temptations and their impulse, something bigger their hope to see the face of Allah so they would sacrifice everything for the sake of seeing Allah's face on the day of judgment that's what motivates them that's what motivates them that's the sweetest thing and the ones who will see Allah more in Jannah are the ones who see him more in their hearts in this life the more you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you make dhikr not only with your tongue, with your heart, the more you do that in this world, 
you're going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah. If we make it to Jannah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people of Jannah. That if you make it to Jannah, the chances you will get to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be proportionate to how often and how much and how deep and sincere you remember, how sincerely you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. Jaza'an wifaqa. It's a fair deal. The heart that was preoccupied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya is the heart that will be given the chance to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. It's proportionate. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Jarir ibn Abdullah radiyallahu anhu he says, كُنَّا مَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات ليلة فقال أترون القمر We were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one night and he said, do you see the moon? He said, yes. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَإِنَّكُمْ سَتَرَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ كَمَا تَرَوْنَ الْبَدْرَ لَيْلَةَ كَمَا تَرَوْنَ الْقَمَرَ لَيْلَةَ الْبَدْرَ لَا تُضَامُونَ فِي رُؤْيَتِهِ He said, you see the moon? You will be able to see your Lord just like you can see the full moon at night without being crowded to be able to get a vision. فَمَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ مِنْكُمْ أَلَّا يُغْلَبَ عَلَى صَلَاةٍ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا فَلْيَفْعَلْ So anyone who can strive and make their best not to miss a prayer before sunrise and a prayer before sunset, then do that. Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Asr. Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Asr. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end. That's the end of the journey, by the way. And as we spoke yesterday about the purpose of the journey, truly that's the purpose of the journey. The purpose of the journey is to meet Allah and be able to see Him. It is something your heart knows. It is something your heart yearns for. It is something that your, your soul craves. Don't deprive your soul of that. And I will close with one statement from Shaykh al-Islam al rahimahullah ta'ala. He was speaking about this. So the people who remember Allah often in this world, the people who are aware of Allah all the time, or most of the time in their life, the people who have Allah in their heart most of their time, these are the ones who are experiencing a joy that is the closest to the people of Jannah when they see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's when he said, Inna fi dunya Jannah man lam yadkhulha lam yadkhul Jannah al-Akhirah. That in this, in this world there is a Jannah. There is paradise in this world. The person who fails to enter it in this world will not enter it on the day of judgment. And what is it? This connection to Allah, being able to see Allah in your heart when you remember Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people who will be given a chance to see His face in the morning and in the evening. And the Prophet ﷺ used to make a dua, it's a long dua, but part of it he used to say, And I ask you the sweetness and the beauty of looking at your face, and I ask you to grant me the yearning and the desire and the longing in this world to see. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us both.